Welcome. We're glad you're here. We'll get started in just a few minutes, but first, let's play some games. Here's what we'll be doing while we count down the time. First, we'll try to guess a sand sculpture. Then, we'll decode a message in a bottle. After that, we'll try to find five hidden lizards. Then we'll trace the path of a butterfly. Next, we'll find the differences between two pictures. And lastly, we'll complete the sentences with a pelican. Ready? Here we go. In this first game, we'll guess what kind of sand sculpture the crab is building. Go ahead, Mr. Crab. Do you have any idea what that shape will be? How about another clue? Any guesses to what it is? Here comes the answer. That's right, it's a church. Good job. Up next, we'll decode the message in the bottle. See if you can unscramble the words to complete the Bible verse. In him was life, and that life was the blank of all blank. The words are light and mankind. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Now it's time to play the game Find the Lizards. In the next scene, you will see five different lizards all camouflaged into their environment. See if you can spot them. Have you found the five lizards? Here they are. The next game is to follow the butterfly. See if you can trace the path of the butterfly as it floats around the bushes. Which path did the butterfly take? Was it number one or two? If you guessed two, you're right. Good job. Now it's time to play a game of Find the Differences. See if you can find four differences between the left and the right side of the rock. Do you see four differences? Here are the answers. In our last game, you'll try to complete the scripture and guess the missing word that the pelican is going to drop off. Set your minds on things above, not on blank things. Can you guess the missing word? Earthly. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Now it's time for the real fun.
this week talking about the blood. That's right, we're still talking about the blood. Sister Christy, we've been talking about the blood for so long, but there's still something else exciting I want to talk to you today about. It's about the first time the blood was shed. But before we get started in our lesson, let's go over our power verse. Our power verse today is in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. The Lord God made clothes out of animal skins for Adam and his wife to wear. Let's say that again. The Lord God made clothes out of animal skins for Adam and his wife to wear. One more time, because I have a pop quiz after this. The Lord God made clothes out of animal skins for Adam and his wife to wear. Are you ready for that quiz? Hit the music. First question, who made the clothes? Did you say the Lord God? Yes, that was right, you got that part right. Next question, what were the clothes made out of? Yeah, animal skins. The clothes were made out of animal skins. Oh, two for two. Last question. I know you're going to get this one. For who were the clothes made? Yes, that's right. The clothes were made for Adam and his wife. This is a bonus question. Who knows Adam's wife's name? Yeah, it's Eve. I didn't even mention that in the scripture. So our power verse is, the Lord God made clothes out of animal skins for Adam and his wife to wear. The address is Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Make sure you take your time to remember that scripture. Now it's time for a game. I love games. Do you love games? The name of this game is Guess What Animal Skin Was Used to Make These Clothes. Are you ready? Here we go. Here we have a jazzy jacket. Oh, look at it. Look at the colors. I will wear this jacket. Would you wear this jacket? Can you guess? What animal skin was used to, to make this jacket? Was it animal A, a cheetah? Was this jazzy jacket made out of the skin of a cheetah? All right, let's go animal B. Was it a giraffe? Was the giraffe skin used to make that jacket? Or animal C, a jaguar? Hmm, I see prints there. So was it A, the cheetah, B, the giraffe, or C, the jaguar? That's right, it was B, the giraffe. Okay, good for you. You guys are knowledgeable about animal skins. Let's go to the next piece of clothing. Here we have a warm, stylish coat made of animal skin. Do you know what animal skin was used to make this Coat? Was it animal A? A white tiger? Look closely. Hmm. Was it animal B? A leopard? I see spots again. Did that coat have spots? Or was it animal C? A coyote? What do you think? Which animal skin was used to make this coat? The answer is A, the white tiger. Did you choose white tiger? Good for you, boys and girls. I'm loving it. Last piece of clothing. Here is my favorite piece of clothing. It's called fancy pants. I call them the fancy pants. Mmm, I bet you think you know that one already. You know what animal skin was used to make these fancy pants. Let's look at these animals. Was it animal A, a skunk? Well, I see black and white. The fancy pants had black and white. I see stripes. Ooh, that would be some stinky pants, wouldn't it be, if they were made out of the skunk skin? Let's go to B. 
Was it the zebra? I see black and white again and I see stripes. Could it be the zebra skin made to make those fancy pants? Or animal C, a mongoose. Have you ever seen a mongoose before? Hey, the mongoose has stripes on his back. The fancy pants has stripes. Which animal skin was used to make the fancy pants? The answer is B, that's right, it was the zebra, the zebra. Do you remember the scripture? Good. Who made those clothes again for Adam and Eve? It was God. Okay, now it's time for our lesson. Did you get all of those answers right? I know you did. Great job, boys and girls. Let's go on to our lesson about the blood. So why is blood so important? Do you remember why the blood is so important to us as believers? Well, the Bible says in Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of our sins. So we need shedding of blood, okay? That's why the blood is so important, because our sin has to be forgiven. God is so holy. He's so wonderful. And we keep doing things that he doesn't approve of. But he loves us so much, he wants to forgive us. He wants to always forgive us. So the blood is so important because without it, there is no forgiveness. Today, boys and girls, we're going to go back and look at the very first story in the Bible. It's with Adam and Eve. Now, Sister Chrissy, I already know about Adam and Eve. But this story is important with the blood because this is the first time in the Bible when someone committed sin, and it's the first time when blood was shed. The Old Testament is a picture. It's like a shadow of what's about to come. So in this story, we're going to figure out what happened with blood. How did God use blood? Okay, here goes our story about Adam and Eve. Look at them in that beautiful garden. So in the beginning, God planted this beautiful garden, boys and girls, and he put Adam, he made Adam. We're not talking about Eve yet. He put Adam in this beautiful garden. I love gardens. And in the garden, God calls, calls all of these trees to grow up from the ground. He said they were beautiful to behold. They were beautiful trees. Not only were they good trees to look at, but they were good for food too. So think about this garden. There's Adam, all of these trees that God planted for Adam. The food is right there for him to eat. And then God made this beautiful river in the garden. It's called Eden. I don't know if I told you that. But this garden of Eden had a river, and the river watered the ground. There was no rain yet. So in this river took care of the garden, and not only were there food with anything you wanted on the trees, but there were also all of these stones like gold and onyx. The very same stones that people go shop for for their rings, they put diamonds in them and gold rings. That stuff was in the Garden of Eden. That's right. So God put Adam there, and do you know what God told Adam to do in that beautiful garden? Just tend to it. Just keep it. That's your only job. And so after God gave Adam his assignment to tend to the garden, he made all of these animals out of the ground again. He said, Adam, what do you want to name this animal? Oh, let's name it the elephant. What do you want to name this animal? Let's name it the mongoose. What do you want to name this animal? Uh, I think his name should be the alligator. So God allowed Adam to name all these animals, and then he put Adam to sleep. Everybody go to sleep. While Adam was sleeping, God opened up his skin and took a rib out. And from that rib, that bone, he made a woman just for Adam. And when Adam woke up from his sleep, let's pretend to be Adam and go back to sleep. Woke up. Hey, when Adam saw that woman, he said, you don't look like these other animals. You're for me. You're just like me. You're bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. So Adam was excited. Do you think Adam loved living in the Garden of Eden? Yes. Do you think Eve loved living in that Garden of Eden? Yes. With all the food you wanted to eat, they didn't have to work for anything. Oh, I forgot to tell you about these two trees that were there in the Garden of Eden as well. There was a tree called the Tree of Life. You see that tree? 
and there was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now God said, Adam and Eve, you can eat from any of these trees, but don't eat from that one. You got that? Sure, God, we got it. So they were enjoying themselves. And what happened? They ate from it. You knew that, right? That tree there, you see them gathering. I put a grape tree there, but we don't know what type of fruit was growing from that tree. But that was the first sin. That's why we're here, boys and girls, because of sin. The moment that Adam and Eve ate from their tree, they looked down and said, Ah! We're naked! <laughs> what do you do when you're naked? You're trying to cover up. Where were they? In the garden. What could they cover up with? Leaves. That's what they did. Can I show you Adam and Eve? I brought them here today. They're my dolls. Here is Adam. Say, hey, Adam. <laughs> Boys and girls, is it okay that Adam wear this hat today? I couldn't find another male doll, um, but we're going to use this little doll here for Adam. And look at him covered up in leaves because he looked down and say, I was naked. I need to cover up. And not only was Adam, did, not only did Adam realize that he was naked, also Eve, that woman that God made for him out of his body, there they are covered up with leaves. So when Adam and Eve were in the garden, did I, I forgot to tell you, not only was the garden a beautiful place, but God was there with them talking to them. God would say, good morning, Adam. Good morning, God. They would talk to each other. It was a wonderful, wonderful relationship. But on the day that they ate from that tree of knowledge of good and evil, they heard God walking through the garden. I'm going to do some walking footsteps, and I'll tell you on this picture what they did. The Bible says when Adam heard God walking through the garden, they quickly ran to hide. Look at them. Who was coming? God. Why would you want to hide from God? So this, comes, this brings me to our next point in our lesson. It's time for a skit. Adam is going to be Adam, and you guys are going to be God. So when Sister Chrissy points to you, you are going to say God's part. On the screen, there's your line. God said, Adam, where are you? So when I point to you, you are going to be God. What's your line? Adam, where are you? Okay, and then I'm going to say the part for Adam, and then you have another part. God has one more part. It says, who told you you were naked? Let's practice. The second part says, who told you you were naked? Okay, are you ready? Let's start the skit. Adam and Eve were in the garden, and they heard God walking through the garden. Here comes God. What did Adam do? Hi! All right, here goes your part. Adam, where are you? Good. I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Second part. Who told you you were naked? And just like that, they were caught. At that moment, when God asked them, who told you you were naked? It was revealed that they had eaten from that tree. And just like us, when it's revealed that we've sinned or we come to knowledge, uh-oh, I've sinned, What's, what should we do? Confess. Remember what it means to confess? Just to admit, say it with your mouth, to tell on yourself. So God asked Adam this question when he said, when he realized that, they were naked. When he said, who told you you were naked? The next question God said was, have you eaten from that tree that I told you not to eat from? 
And Adam said, well, yeah, I did do it, but it was the woman you gave me. And Eve said, well, it was that serpent who tricked me to eat from the garden. Well, anyway, I'm just glad they confessed that they did sin against God. And you know what happened next? The same thing that God does for us. Whenever we sin and we confess, God is quick to forgive us. So on this slide, you see that Adam and Eve are walking out the garden because God told them they had to leave. You know, God forgave them and he gave them some clothes. We're gonna talk about those clothes. He said, you can't stay here because you might eat from that other tree, the tree of life that will cause people to live forever. So God still loved Adam, he was with him, but you have to go. How do you think they felt about that? Now, no longer was the trees available for them to quickly eat. They had to work the ground and plant seeds and cause things to grow. God planted the Garden of Eden. Now it was on them. They had to work now. And Eve is going to have children. And God said, when you have those children, it's not going to feel good. All because of that sin. But he quickly forgave them. After they were forced to leave the garden because of their sin, we now have a picture of how God shed his blood, shed blood so sins can be forgiven. Let's look at our memory verse again. The Lord God made clothes out of skins for Adam and his wife. You see that picture there on the next screen? You see those clothes laying on that rock? Adam and Eve got through telling God what they had done. That's confession. And quickly, the Lord made clothes out of animal skins. Why is the animal skin so important? And why are we using the memory verse about God making skin out of animals? I'm glad you asked. Where do you think the skin come from? That's right, it comes from animals. On the next slide, do you see that animal there? That's an antelope. Do you see the skin next to it? That's the skin of an antelope. What do you think had to happen to this animal in order to get that skin? Yeah, it had to die. An animal has to be killed in order to take the skin off. I'm not talking about shaving the animal for the fur. In order to take the skin, the very skin off an animal, it has to be put to death. Let's bring back Adam and Eve. God made clothes for Adam and Eve out of the animal skin. Now that animal had to be killed. When you kill something and cut off its skin, you are going to get blood. You see blood highlighted there in red? If you have to take a skin off an animal and kill it, you are going to get blood which brings us back to the most important question about the blood. Why is it so important? Because without blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. God was the only one who knew that at the time when Adam and Eve sinned. God knew that something or someone had to die so that their sin could be forgiven. But God loved them. He did not want them to die, just like he loves us. He doesn't want to give us the punishment for our sin. Do you remember the punishment for sin? The payoff is death. God didn't want Adam and Eve to die. So what happened? He allowed that animal to be sacrificed. That's why the skin is a picture of God sacrificing something so their sins could be covered out of his sight. God loves us, and he does not want to remember our sin. He's not thinking about our sin. The moment that we confess, the moment we are like Adam and Eve and say, yeah, we did it, we ate something, God quickly wants to cover the sin out of his sight and forgive it forever. Do you want God to cover your sin? The Bible says everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But remember, God loves us so much. He doesn't want us to have to pay off the debt of sin, which is debt. No longer does an animal, on this next slide, you see Jesus there? That's him dying. But God didn't allow his son to stay dead, of course. He died as a payoff for our sin. Before, before Jesus came to die for our sin, they used to use an animal, just like God used an animal 
to get the skin off for Adam and Eve. In the Old Testament, every year, they went to the priest to give a sacrifice for their sin. They would give a lamb. Well, God no longer requires a lamb because he gave his son, Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus is called the Lamb of God. Did you know Jesus is also called the Lamb of God? That lamb, our Savior, Jesus Christ, was killed. He died, he suffered as a payoff for our sins. And our sins are covered. We are forgiven. In Romans chapter 6, 23, the Bible says the wages of sin, the payoff of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life eternal life. That's living forever and ever and ever with the Father. Don't you want that gift? I've gotten that gift. Maybe you want it too. If you never received that free gift that God has given so that our sins could be covered, why don't you pray with me? It's only confessing with your mouth. That's so important to God. Confessing. Confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart. Come along and pray with me to receive the special gift that God gave so that your sins could be covered forever. Father God, I have sinned, but I believe you sent your son to die for my sins and forgive me of my sins. And he is alive. He's risen from the dead and he is my savior. Lord, I believe I am your child this day. And I'm saved just like that. You have become a child of God. I'm so happy that my sins are covered. Are your sins covered? That's all I have for you today, boys and girls. It was great being with you again, talking about the blood. Until next time, let's keep showing the world that we are redeemed. Our sins have been paid off. I'll see you guys next week or next time if I'm not here next week. Bye. Super.